Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In the series of uh, programming of the graphs, on the last time we have discussed about the DFS. Earlier to that, we have discussed about the breadth first search. Uh, in today's lecture, we're going to see that uh, using the depth first search algorithm, whether we can find out the total number of connected components in the graph. Because of the graph, there may be several different connected components. We have to identify how many total number of connected components are there. And inside each of the connected components, we will find out how many elements are there or how many vertices are there. Now to understand this, let's look at an example. Suppose this is the graph. And in this graph, you have to identify the number of the connected components. So you can see that the total number of connected components are three. One is this one, another one is this one, and another one is this one. So to find the total number of connected components, we will first have to look at the DFS algorithm once again. So recall the DFS algorithm, wherein there was a function DFS, which was the iterative function wherein the adjacency list was given and the total number of vertices were given. In this, we used to take the status array or a status vector, and we have initialized the status of all the vertices as zero. After this, we have picked each of the vertex one by one, and checked if the status of that vertex is unmarked or unvisited, then we were calling a recursive function named as DFS visit. The DFS visit function had three parameters, adjacency list, status, and the vertex i to which we need to traverse. After this, we have written a DFS visit function, which was a recursive function, because for performing the DFS, we need to do the things in the recursive fashion because we have to go into depth. And then we have to backtrack also from where there is no progress. So here, the adjacency list, the status vector, and the vector, I, the vertex i, which has to be visited. So we first used to mark the visited status or the status of vertex number i as 1, meaning that this vertex has been visited. And then we used to print this i. After this, we used to check the connections from i for, for, or for j element of adjacent to i. We used to check if the status of my jth vertex is zero, it means it has not been visited yet. So we used to call the DFS visit function in recursive fashion to visit this vertex and its step. So this was the DFS visit. Now, to find out the number of connected components, you just need to re-verify these, these uh, functions. And you need to recall that when is the DFS visit function is called, and when is the control passing back to the DFS. For example, if I start my traversal from 0, then 0 will be connected to 11. And then 11 will be connected to 5. There are no more connections from 5. You will have to backtrack to 11. And then from 11, you will backtrack to 0 from where there is no other connection. So from the DFS, you have started with i equals to 0. You have called this DFS visit function. In the DFS visit function, when there was no progress from 0, we have stopped this and we have came back to the DFS algorithm. In the DFS algorithm, we have already seen the connection from 0. You now see the connection from 1. Now, once you look at the connection from 1, it means that you are starting your traversal here. So from 1, we will visit 7. From 7, we will visit 2. From 2, we will visit 4. From 4, we will visit 
nowhere so we will backtrack and come back to 7 we now look at 7 to 8 connection going ahead with the 8 there is no more connection so backtrack to 7 and then 7 to 10 connection no more connection from 10 back backtrack to 7 and 7 to 9 connection and then backtrack to 7 from 7 there is no more connection so backtrack to 1 and from 1 there is no more connection so it means that the process has stopped and the control will once again pass from DFS visit to DFS. Here we will check the connection. We have already seen 0 and 1 and then we will look at 2 which has been visited. Then 3 is not visited. So you will once again move from DFS to DFS visit. So meaning that whenever you are coming back or whenever you are progressing from DFS to the DFS visit, you are going for one connected component. And when you are coming back to the DFS and you are again going to the DFS visit with the request with the another call, the connected component has been increased by one. So you will have to apply this here, or you will have to apply this change here in this algorithm. It means that whenever you are shifting back from the DFS visit to the DFS, you are actually going for the next connected component. So let's take a counter variable or a counter as one, which is counting the number of connected components. So let's take it is zero. And whenever first time you're calling the DFS visit function, you update this C by one. Finally, when you are done with the algorithm, the value of C will be representing the number of connected components. I hope you must have understood this. Let's do it let's do the dry run to this so you have started with the dfs and then you have marked the status of all the vertices is zero a counter c which is counting the number of connected component is zero we're looking for a connection from zero first and when you visit this uh, first vertex with zero and its connection from zero to 11 and then 11 to 5 then there is no more connection so we are coming back from 5 to 11 backtracking from 11 to 0, no connection from 0, it means you are going back from DFS visit function to the DFS again. Here, we have seen the status of 0. We will look at the value of i for 1. The status of i is not visited. So, we'll call the DFS visit function and updating the counter. Earlier, the counter was updated to 1. Now, this one, this will be updated to 2. Either you can keep it below DFS visit or above DFS visit doesn't matter. Let's say we are putting it above the DFS visit. So before calling to the DFS visit function, we are updating the number of connected components or incrementing with the connected component by one. Now the DFS visit function is called with the vertex number one. You are going with the connections from one and in the depth and then when there is no more connection from one, you stop and come back to the DFS. And then you check the status of, in, in this loop, we have already checked the status of 0 and 1. You will check the status of 2, which has been visited. Then you will check the status of 3, which has not been visited. And then you will go to the DFS visit function. And before that, you will update the counter by 1. It means the connected components have been incremented by 1. It is now 3. So with 3, the connections will be explored from 3 to 6, then 6 to 12. No more connection from 12, so backtrack to 6. And no more connection from 6, backtrack to 3. No more connection from this. Then you will again come back to the DFS function. Now the DFS function, you've already seen with the loop, the status of 0, 1, 2, 3. You're now going to check the status of 4, visited 5, visited 6, visited 7, visited 8, visited 9, visited 10, visited 11, visited 12, visited. It means all the vertices have been visited. It means DFS is now going to be complete. So you will return the C which will be representing the total number of the connected components. So this is going to be very, very easy because we are, uh, as many times we are calling from the DFS to the DFS visit function, the number of connected component is same. Now, in case we are done with the uh, total number of the, uh, total number of uh, the uh, connected components, the next thing would be that we have to find out the total number of uh, total number of uh, uh, nodes in every 
connected component. So to find out the total number of uh, nodes in each of the connected component, let's do a very small correction in the DFS visitor column. Because to find out the number of elements in the connected component, you will have to look at the DFS visit function. So I'm just updating all the notations that we have made. And then we are going to the DFS visit function. Whenever we are going to the DFS visit function, the number of elements in the start will be zero or the number of uh, nodes in the direct uh, connected component will be zero. So you pass a parameter zero here. And then you accept the number of elements in that connected component in some x parameter. Fine. And in the DFS visit function, we have the additional parameter x, which is initially accepting s x. And whenever we update the status of any vertex as 1, we will increment this x value. Fine. And then whenever we are calling the DFS visit function recursively, it will be returning the previous, uh, uh, the previous call of x or it will be returning the value from the previous call of x. We will return this x value once the function finishes. Means the place where we will write this return x it will be somewhere here. Okay, so the DFS visit function is called. The previous value of x is passed such that if there is any more connection, we will update the x by this is statement, this mean, it means x plus plus. So you can see that the number of connected components is found in the DFS. And if we, have, we are making a chain with the help of the DFS visit function, the value of x is updated or mean the number of elements in the connected components or number of vertices in the connection component will be updated accordingly. So now let's try to code this. Let's say this is the graph given to us. And in this graph, we are updating the number of edge. So we, this is 1 edge, 2 edge, 3 edge, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Then edge number 8, edge number 9, edge number 10, and edge number 11. So we will have to find out the adjacency list for the same. So let's look at this code. And this code for sapping that uh, we have the DFS visit function and the DFS function. Since we already have coded this uh, in, while doing the programming of uh, the depth first search, we will just make small corrections in this and this will be, uh, this will become the program for the connected components. So what changes are required in the DFS, we already have seen in the algorithm that we need to uh, increment a counter whenever we are going to call the DFS visit function. So let's say, the C is a variable which is counting the number of connected components and it has been initialized to zero. And every time we are going in the loop and we are calling the DFS function, the C is updated, C value is updated by one. So when we will come out of this loop, we will have an idea about how many times uh, from this loop we have called the DFS visit function. And the same will be the number of the connected components. Uh, to update this, uh, we also need to find out the number of elements in each of the connected components. So let's look at uh, this 23 number line, which is uh, a vector has been initial vector has been declared. The name of the vector is elements of the connected component. In each of the connected component, there will be at least one element. It means one. So while calling the DFS visit function, we are passing a one value that will count the number of uh, the uh, nodes and since uh, in every connected component there will be at least one node so one has been passed here as a parameter in the dfs function as many times in the dfs visit function as many times we are calling the dfs visit again inside this it means the recursive call is made the value of this number of elements in the connected component is updated by one or incremented by one so as many times uh, we will be calling the DFS visit function from the same chain, the same number, the the the, the chain will have uh, the, the the chain will have more number of the uh, elements or more number of nodes in the connected component. So the value returned by this uh, DFS visit function is stored here. It means the previous calls value will be stored 
or the return of the previous call will be stored in the x. And finally, we'll be returning the x value, which is the number of elements in the given category. So let's uh, look at the DFS algorithm once again, wherein we are printing the number of elements in the connected component and the connected components also. So connected components are seen, and inside each of the connected component, we are printing the elements. So you can see that uh, when the DFS visit function is returning a value, we are storing that in the element or ELE variable. And that ELE variable is pushed back in the elements in the connected component vector. So the first element, the first time when we have the value of ELE or first time when we are inverting the value of ELE in this uh, vector, it will be telling us the number of elements in the first connected component. Then it will be storing the value of value in the another connected component next time when it is returning the value and so on and so forth. Now let's uh, see or let's run this program and give the input and check or verify if this is giving us the correct result. Now let's verify this uh, with the example given on the left hand side. So we have the total number of uh, vertices 13, number of edges are 11, endpoints of edge 1 is 1 and 7, endpoint of edge 2 is 2 and 7, endpoint of edge 3 is 2 and 4, endpoint of edge 4 is 4 and 7, endpoint of edge 5 is 7 and 8, endpoint of edge 6 is 7 and 10, endpoint of edge 7 is 7 and 9, endpoint of edge 8 is 5 and 11, Endpoint of edge eleven, uh, edge nine is zero and eleven. Endpoint of edge ten is three and six. For eleventh edge, it is six and twelve. So first we obtain the number of uh, the adjacency list. So this is representing the adjacency list. After this, this is the DFS DFS sequence, and then the number of connected components are three. And the elements in the first connected component is three year has three elements, second one has two so seven elements, and the third one has three elements. We can verify it from here. If we start our traversal from zero, then the number of elements in this connected components will be three. And then if I start from two in this part, the total number of elements in this connected components are seven. And when we start our tool from three, the number of uh, elements in this connected components are also three. So the number of elements in the first connected component is three. In the second one, it has seven, and in the third one it has three. So with the help of this uh, connected components and the number of elements in the connected component, we can solve many complicated coding problems. For example, in the hacker rank, there is a problem given as journey to the moon. In the journey to the moon problem, we need to find out the number of elements in each of the connected component accordingly we have to decide how many people or how many combinations of the astronauts can be there to send it to them. So it's a very interesting problem. You should uh, attempt that problem with the help of this logic. Thank you.